one of its craziest offseason in history. Are the Rams to blame? You are Locked On Rams, your daily Los Angeles Rams podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked on Rams your first listen every single day, free and available wherever you get your podcast. Don't forget to subscribe to both Locked on Rams on the podcast and, of course, Locked on Rams on our YouTube channel as well. So you can check out my unbelievably fantastic face every single time that you listen to this podcast along the way as well. My name is Travis Rogers. I host the Rams pregame show, postgame show on their flagship station ESPN 710 right here in Los Angeles. I've been doing it since the Rams returned to L.A. way back. Back in 2016, and of course, we've had a couple of Super Bowl runs since there and sit here as the defending Super Bowl champions from 2021. So going into the title defense, make sure that you subscribe to Locked on Rams, your team, every single day. Okay, I want to talk about some of the comments that you posted on the YouTube channel. Speaking of the YouTube channel, make sure that you subscribe to that because this is where I see your feedback on some of the things that the Rams have done on the podcast, etc. We're going to respond to some of those comments coming up in just a little bit. Plus, I want to talk about um, Sean McVay and some of the things that and some of the things that he has said over the last couple of years, Sean McVay is not playing a lot of poker with his comments when it comes to the league and their personnel. But let's start with this. Is this the craziest offseason that we've seen in the NFL? If not ever, maybe in decades, it, it sure feels like it. Because think about what has happened this offseason. Think about all of the teams that did something dramatic, that did something bold, that did something that... Typically, you wouldn't see maybe one team would do something big in any given offseason. We had a whole bunch of teams do a whole bunch of things with a bunch of big name players. Let's just go down the list very quickly, and I'm sure I may leave one or two off. Tyreek Hill, one of the most dangerous players in the league, is no longer a member of the Kansas City Chiefs. He's in Miami. Miami sent a bunch of first round picks going back the, the other way. Deshaun Watson, and again, I, I feel like I need to say this every time we talk about Deshaun Watson. Let's put all of his off-the-field stuff in a separate category and what that may mean, but Deshaun Watson is a phenomenal NFL quarterback. He's in a new team in Cleveland, and they gave away first-round draft picks from now until the end of time. We have Russell Wilson in Denver. We have Khalil Mack now back in Los Angeles with the Chargers. We have Matt Ryan in Indianapolis. We have player Devontae Adams is in Las Vegas. If, if he's not the best wide receiver in football, he's not too far past number two or three. These are just a, a handful of people that we're talking about. And this all happened in the last few weeks. Big name people going to new teams. Remind you of anybody? <laughs> does, does that sound familiar by chance? Because let's run this back a little bit. You, we, we have seen people in the league trade draft picks to move up in the draft. We've seen guys give away a whole bunch of things to go get the players that they want. Th this is not new. But what is new is that after something like that happens, and I don't know, let me just pick one at random here. Let's say you gave away a bunch of first-round draft picks to go get Jared Goff. Okay, just hypothetically speaking. And a couple of years after you did that, you realize, you know what, it's not quite good enough. And then you went out and traded a bunch of first-round picks again to get a new quarterback. And while all of this is happening, you also went out and picked up the best cornerback in the market and gave away a couple of first-round draft picks to do it. I don't know. Let's just pick a name at random. Ah, uh, Jalen Ramsey. How about that? And let's say that there were some other guys along the way that are big-name players, and you said, you know what? We're okay giving away some draft picks. Give me the, the proven commodity. I don't know. I'm like a Hall of Famer. Like, I don't Von Miller, for instance. Maybe there's a player that has a little bit of a spotty reputation, but you think, you know what? It's not, as, it's not on him. It's on everyone around him. Give me Odell Beckham Jr. And then there's everyone else that we haven't mentioned, whether it's Marcus Peters or whether it's Aqib Tlaib or whether it's Clay Matthews or Eric Weddle or any of these other people that the Rams have been incredibly aggressive about going to get. What did the Rams get for all of this boldness? They've gotten, in five years, they have gotten three division titles, they've gone to the Super Bowl twice, and they're a Super Bowl champion as we sit here right now. 
And now you look around at the rest of the NFL and you see all of these teams going big. You, I'll take Devontae Adams. Here's some picks. I'll take Tyreek Hill. Here's some picks. I'll, that We have movement like we have. Deshaun Watson got three first-round draft picks. Deshaun Watson may get suspended by the league. Deshaun Jackson you know, may have to start writing checks to anybody and everyone that's ever given him a massage. And who knows how this shakes out. But teams are going all in. The Rams have created this environment where they've proven to the rest of the league that it works. And, and I think that you've seen it most specifically in the quarterbacks that we talked about yesterday on Locked on Rams. This is why you got to subscribe and get Locked on Rams in your feed, your team, every single day. But it's not just quarterbacks. It's not just, hey, if my quarterback's not good enough, I need to go get another guy. That's part of it. The Rams proved that that's, that's a key to success. But give me the guy. Are the Green Bay Packers going to draft a player better than Devontae Adams? Probably not, right? Are the Kansas City Chiefs going to go find another Tyreek Hill? Probably not, right? Miami's got a guy. Vegas has a guy. Khalil Mack in, 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 in L.A. with the trade. All of the players that we've just mentioned, right? There's so many big-name guys that have moved. You can't tell me that the Rams didn't like this match, that the Rams didn't kind of break the mold for what they're doing and decide, look, we're not going to do it like everyone else. I'm not going to sit around and hope to draft the guy that's going to get me the guy and then hope to draft the next guy. And we're going to find this guy. No, 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 no. Jalen Ramsey's the best player at his position. I will take him from you. I'll take that. Two first, fine. Here, take the picks. I'm not getting another Jalen Ramsey. I think everyone's starting to see that. And the Rams have, look, I'd rather be the guy that invents this philosophy and understands it better than anybody else, knows how to manipulate the cap better than anybody else, and kind of is the one leading this new revolution in the NFL as opposed to, hey, what are the Rams doing over there? How do they have all of these good players? You, you can't tell me that there aren't general managers, and, and maybe even more importantly than general managers, but fans in other cities around the NFL thinking, wait, the Rams got who? Allen Robinson? Wh how? How do they pay him? Wait a second. They got Bobby Wagner too? Didn't they just do, redo Matthew Stafford's deal? Aren't they in the process of redoing Aaron Donald's deal? Aren't they in the process of redoing Cooper Cup's deal? Didn't they give this guy or that guy all of this money? Yeah, they did. And they went out and continued to get good player after good player after good player. You cannot convince me that it's not a coincidence that what the Rams have done over the last four or five years, being incredibly aggressive in free agency, with a, a, I don't want to say contempt for draft picks, because I don't think that's what it is. We heard Les Snead say that it's not a matter of not valuing them. We just value them differently. We use them as capital to go buy what we want. You can't tell me that the way that they've done it and the success that, look, if they'd done what they did and then they finished in third place in the division or they made a wild card round and they got thumped in the first round, if they were a team like that, then I don't, I don't think you're seeing what you're seeing in the offseason. But when you see success, if you're somewhere else in that league and everything else is working one way and the guy that's zigging when everyone else is zagging and he's the one with the Super Bowl channel, you're going to start looking at it. I do not think it's a coincidence that they did what they did. Uh, the rest of the league did what they did in the last couple of weeks and months because the Rams have changed the game. And, and I would rather have the guy that changed it than someone that's trying to replicate the changes that someone else has done. And it makes me feel very good about where the Rams are moving forward. Okay, so if Sean McVay says something, you need to be paying very close attention because something is probably going to happen right after that. That's coming up in just a bit, but let me tell you about Bet Online, right? College basketball, we are just about at the end of the line. The Final Four is here, and the national champion right around the corner, just tomorrow. In fact, we're going to find out who the two finalists are. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all your betting needs and sports information from all the latest odds, contests, player props, you name it. Still, Bet online is still the best spot for all your latest scores, sports developments, podcasts, reviews, all of the leagues this season, all the information you want. You got your team picked up a new guy. You want to see how it affected your odds. You want to see, did you get a little better? Did you get a little worse? For instance, Carson Wentz moves teams. The new team was where they were, and now they're in the exact same spot, right? This is all on Bet Online. You can find it out. And it's not just basketball. It's not just football. It's your continued source for all of your sports wagering information needs, live betting, Vegas casino games, you name it. Bet online is the place to go do it. Head by the website today, or you can use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. Bet online where the game starts. And thanks for making Locked on Rams your first listen every single day. Make sure that you're also listening to Locked on NFL. Locked on experts covering the biggest stories around the NFL every Monday through Friday in less than 30 minutes. It, too, is free and available wherever you get your podcasts. 
Okay, so Rich Hammond, who covers the uh, the Rams for the Athletic, had a really interesting tweet. I thought that uh, when he when he when he wrote, I'm like, wow, that is absolutely true. And what he tweeted was undeniable rule of the Rams. When Sean McVay entertained something publicly, Aaron Donald contract extension, he's our quarterback right now. Odell uh, Odell Beckham, Von Miller, Bobby Wagner, you can count on something happening. I appreciate his lack of a poker face. Um, right? <laughs> Think about this, right? That. You've got a guy that what have NFL coaches let, let me let me back up even further. We were just talking about how the league is a copycat league, right? We were just talking about how the league has become um far more aggressive because other teams like the Rams have proven that draft picks and waiting around for development is not the only way to make something work. That you can be incredibly aggressive in the way that you use your draft picks, acquiring star players, and now other teams are starting to, to, to chase that and try to follow the similar mold. Well, who is the team that has had more success than anybody over the last couple of decades? Patriots, right? Of course, it's Patriots. They've been to the Super Bowl 5,000 times, and Bill Belichick is the greatest NFL coach of all time, Tom Brady, et cetera, et cetera. But what is Tom, excuse me, what is Bill Belichick most known for? Just being incredibly reticent to talk, just being incredibly taciturn and just he just doesn't want to talk he just well we're on to Cincinnati right that might be the most famous Bill Belichick quote outside of do your job we're on to Cincinnati in other words I'm not telling you guys blank you can ask me whatever you want oh yeah boy, very well yeah coach but uh the guy snapped his leg in half in the middle of the second quarter what did you see there we're going to Cincinnati okay that that's his style and that's the way that he does it and that's fine Sean McVay doesn't play that right and I think that we're starting to see a guy that is really I don't want to say feeling himself because that sounds negative and I don't mean this negative in any way, but this is a guy that knows what he's doing, right? We, we've all had those moments, maybe not quite to the degree that Sean McVay has, but we've all had those moments where just everything's kind of working for me, right? That everything I try is, is, is happening and I have an idea. I execute the idea. It turns out it's a really good idea. And you just start to get on a little bit of a hot streak and you, you're a little more willing to kind of explain your methodology, right? And I think that's what's going on with, with McVeigh. Not that he's explaining everything, but he's comfortable. That what the Rams do is very obvious. So when they say they're in the process of renegotiating Aaron Donald's contract, they are. When they say that Von Miller's a possibility, he is. When they say they have interest in Bobby Wagner, they get Bobby Wagner. Let, let, let's use Odell as a student. They say they want to re-sign him. I believe them. I believe that they want to resign. It's not a guarantee that it's going to happen. But when he said a couple of years ago, or not even a couple of years ago, about a year and a half ago or so, hey, is Jared Goff your quarterback? Well, he is today. He is right now. He is, you know, for the time being or however he phrased it. And then, you know, eight or 10 seconds went by and we'd like to introduce Matthew Stafford as our new quarterback. Listen to what he says. You know, a lot of times teams are going to say one thing and go do the other. They're going to talk about this guy and then draft another guy. And then that's fine. There, there's some you know, corporate espionage going on. It's a misdirection and, and whatever you want to call it, fine, whatever. The Rams and Sean McVay in particular, they really don't do that. They're telling you, we like this player. We'd like to keep this player. We're thinking about doing something else at that position. They're probably going to do something else at this position. When they made the acquisition for Allen Robinson and it was very obvious that something was going to happen uh, in the wide receiver room that somebody had to go. Nobody was pretending that it wasn't going to happen. They kind of put the whole thing out there. And again, I think it speaks to the culture of what they're doing. Guys can live with the fact that they may go. Guys can live with the fact that they may get cut. They may get traded. They may get released. They, whatever it might be, they may lose their starting position. They just kind of want to know where they stand. And if they're being as forthright as they are publicly, the, the organization, Sean McVay, Les Snead, I would imagine they're even more so with their players. Players are going to appreciate that. And when that when when the word starts to go around, hey, you played for the Rams. What did you think about that? Yeah, you know what? It's a pretty good experience. McVay's a, McVay's a straight shooter. McVay's a great coach. He's going to tell you what's going on, and we're going to move on from there. A tough guy, ruthless guy. He's going to you know he's looking for the best guy, but he that's fine. They can they can live with that. It's that no man. He said one thing and he did the other. That's what you don't want going around. No, they said they were going to do this and they didn't do that at all. They sold me a bill of goods when I got in there. It was a totally different thing. That's not the that's not the word on the street with these guys. If they say it, they mean it. They do it. I don't know if that's true for every team. And, and when I saw that tweet, when I saw all the things that he basically basically is tele, uh, telegraphing what it is he's going to do, when you hear he's our guy for the time being or he's our guy right now, sometimes that means I'm just frustrated. I had a bad moment. You're waiting for them to walk it back. You're waiting for them to say, look, my emotions got the best of me. No, no, no. It means we're getting ready to pull the trigger on a big deal. 
Hey, Bobby Wagner's a big free agent. You guys have interest? Sure do. Sure do. Well, you might want to start clearing out a locker because it may mean that he's going to be here sooner than later. I like it. I it, It's very fun to not have to try to decode, right? If they have interest, they're going to, it's legitimate interest. Odell's a perfect example. Maybe they'll get it done. Maybe they won't. But I guarantee you there's an offer on that table that's a real offer. And it's up to Odell whether or not he wants to accept, whether or not he wants to go somewhere else, whether or not he wants to come back and play with Matthew Stafford or go back to Cleveland, whatever it might be. Ball's in his court. And the Rams have done a masterful job of making this a destination for a variety of reasons, and this is just another one. All right, your YouTube comments coming up next. In particular, your thoughts on the Bobby Wagner acquisition that took place uh, yesterday on March 31st. So we'll get into that coming up in just a bit. But look, you're heading into the weekend, right? You're heading into the weekend, and what happens on the weekend? You maybe make some decisions with your food, maybe some things that you're going to drink that aren't great. Well, how about getting back on track, right? This is where Built Bar comes in. I know that the New Year's resolutions are long gone. They're way in the rear of your mirror. We're into April already, but doesn't mean you can't make a good food choice a couple of times a day, a couple of times a week, a few times a week, whatever it is. That's where Built Bar comes in, right? They're all covered in 100% real chocolate, puffs included, every bar included along the way. And what they are, they're low calorie, high protein. That's what you want. You don't want a bunch of calories. You want the protein. It's going to fill you up. It's going to taste great. Get rid of all your crummy snacks with built bars, right? Replace your candy bars with these, the chips, everything else that you have that I'm starving. I got to have this. Put the built bars where all those things are. You're going to thank me. You're going to thank the guys at Built Bar. They're just better. Go to built.com and scroll down the look at the macros chart. You don't even know, need to know what that means. It means all the good stuff is in the built bar, all the bad stuff's in the candy bar. You're going to thank me for this, right? Mint brownie, coconut, coconut almond, all the flavors. They're just fantastic. And at Built Bar, all about the taste. They make them taste great first, and they figure out the rest of it from there. Here's how you get yours. Built.com. Go to Built.com. Use the promo code LOCKED15 and get 15% off of your order. Use the promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at Built.com. Okay, so let's go to the Locked on Rams YouTube channel right now and read some of the comments that have come in. And this is just from yesterday's pod, talking about the Rams adding Bobby Wagner to their Super Bowl defense already. Um, I want to talk about some of the responses that I've gotten here because I think you guys are, are really on top of it. And this is a very good way for you to interact with Locked on Rams. You can put your comments there or at least once a week or so. We're going to try to make sure that we read as many of these as we can. This one comes from um, a viewer named PB. And it says, that's what innovators do. And watch when all these teams think they got us figured out. We're going to change the game again on them and completely blow their minds. It's what LA does. Our city and teams are always changing and adapting. Okay, PB, let's, I hope so. I hope you're right. I hope that's how this ultimately ends up going. Um, they've clearly figured out a way to do it differently than everyone else. They've clearly figured out a way to use the draft and use the capital of draft picks differently from every other team in the NFL. We're seeing it. We talked about it in the first segment of the pod. We're seeing it right now. I think more teams are trying to duplicate what it is the Rams are doing. And maybe there is another zag coming for the Rams. Maybe they're going to, you know, they, they've clearly figured out the salary cap differently than other people. They feel they clearly figured out how to use draft picks differently than other people. Maybe there is a zag coming. I think the thing that's particularly reassuring is the guy that came up with this in the first place or the guys or the teams or the organization, they're all still here. I know that the assistant coaches come in and out, and I'm not dismissing their, their importance of this, but the, the grand vision of this, it's a three-headed monster, right? It's McVay, it's Sneed, and it's ownership. And as long as those three guys are still in the mix, whatever the zag may be coming up, PB, and I think you may be right, there may be something at some point, I have faith that it's going to be pretty effective. As for the rest of the teams in L.A., I think the Dodgers have exemplified this perhaps better than anybody else, having your present and your future kind of locked down at the same time. You look at the Lakers right now, and I think that's the great question about them, right? What do you do? Do you blow it up? Do you go young? Do you go draft picks? Do you use the draft pick capital that you don't have to try to go find something else? Do you just wait for free agency and sell the glitz and glamour? That's the one in town that makes me feel a little uneasy because the people that are responsible for putting that thing together – Maybe not the right people to do it. We'll see. But I agree with you that the Rams have cracked this code. It's very, very exciting along the way. This one comes from Stan Long. It says, obviously a boon for the Rams. Wagner knows the insides and outs of all the other NFC West teams. Wagner will be geared up to have some of his best games against his former Seahawks. And Wagner will be a big improvement to those opponents runs up the middle. Okay, Stan, the last part I think is the, the best part of this. 
the Rams, when they struggled, right? Let's go back to the month of November where they were really having a hard time. Who did they have a hard time with? They had a hard time with Tennessee, San Francisco, and Green Bay. Those are the teams that seem to not just beat them, but have a relatively comfortable time doing it. And they did it in a relatively similar way, which started with a bunch of running, right? Started with running the ball, in particular running the ball in the middle of the field. They struggled with that a little bit. The Rams did. Now, all of a sudden, with a middle linebacker like Bobby Wagner, that takes a great deal of pressure off of you in that particular situation. I think you're right. Just from a pure football standpoint, that's a tactical upgrade. I also agree with you that him knowing that division as well as he does is very, very valuable. Now, I think that it's more just a motivation factor that the Seahawks are in. The the, the Seahawks are not going to be a factor in the NFC West this season. I really don't think that they are. I think it's going to be the Rams and San Francisco, and I think Arizona is the wild card. I think Arizona depending on if they continue to get better, depending on if Kyler Murray kind of takes his game to the next level, then the Cardinals could certainly find themselves in the mix too. I don't see it with Seattle, so I don't think it's a giant like, you know, I'll show you guys Seattle. I think it's a, I'm going to go win the Super Bowl Seattle, and this is the best place for me to do it. It happens to be in the same division. I think you're right, though, about him knowing those other teams and having an advantage there. But at the end of the day, I think the, just the most obvious thing is it's just a really good fit for the Rams football speaking. And it's just a guy that is still at the top of his game. Bobby Wagner, how about this? You look at this defense in the last five seasons. This is bananas. In the last five seasons, first team all pro defense. Aaron Donald's made it five times, five for five. Bobby Wagner has made it four times. Bobby Wagner, four time first team defense all pro in the last five years. Jalen Ramsey has made it three times first team all pro defense in the last five years. All of those guys are on the same defense. We talk about it right with the offense of Cooper Cup and Matthew Stafford and OBJ and Robert Woods and the addition of Allen, offense, 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 Sean McVay, offense, offense, offense. The defense is the reason that they won the Super Bowl. The defense is the one that had to basically pitch a shutout in the second half minus a, a, a face mask on a long play to open up. This is another addition to that defense, and I think it's a great, great indicator of what's coming up next. Uh, Sharp AF writes, we need one more piece in the secondary. I don't agree. Or I should say I do agree. I think you're right. I think that you look at what the Rams have defensively in the secondary. I think there's work to be done. Darius Williams is gone. You've got David Long. You've got Robert Rochelle coming back. Relatively unproven players. Now, the Rams, we've heard Les Seen say it. They're going to have to put some guys that maybe are a little greener than you'd prefer. Maybe not quite as um, highly regarded as maybe you would like in a perfect world, but if you're getting all these other guys, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to you know tighten the belt in some other spots, and I think that's it. I also don't think that they're done yet. Keep in mind they, the draft is still ahead. There are still guys that are gonna get cut in training camp. There are still guys that you're gonna be able to go pick off of other teams along the way. But I do agree with you. I think if you look at this, they addressed the linebacker situation. That was a position of need. But the, the behind those guys in the secondary. You've got, obviously, Jalen Ramsey on one side, but the rest of that, I think, you know, you have Jordan Fuller back. He's being a little more healthy. I think that's probably a very good thing. What do you do with Taylor Rapp? Do you move him into a linebacker sort of role because it doesn't feel like he can really cover anybody? He can hit you the snot out of you, but he doesn't feel like a great coverage guy. I agree with you. I think that the, uh, the move to go get somebody in the secondary is probably going to happen for too long. Uh, and then one last one. This is from Original One. And he says the Rams were supposedly twenty million over the cap. LOL. Salary cap space is a myth, and the Rams are clearly proving that. LOL. Um, yes, <laughs> right. So, I uh, I did a radio show here in Los Angeles for a long time with former USC standout number one overall pick, Jets, Bucks, Super Bowl champion Keyshawn Johnson, buddy of mine, huge fan of Keys. He told me this. This was four or five years ago, and I looked at him like I'll, I'll, I'll use one of Key's expressions. I looked at him like he had frogs on his face, right? Like, what are you talking about? You, you're out of your bleeping mind. There's no way. And he said to me, this was a while ago, Travis, you don't understand. There is no cap. They can do whatever they want. They just have to be willing to pay the price. They just have to be willing to have the money and spend the money and go do it. You can keep pushing this stuff down the road. You just have to have somebody that's willing to eat the money at the end that there is no cap that it's there for guys that don't want to spend the money so they can say, ah, we're capped out. I'm like, of course, that, that's insane. No, there isn't. That, that can't be what it is because there would be somebody that would just say, I'm going to go spend all the money. I'll pay the bill when it's due. We'll just keep kicking the can down the road and eventually we'll pay the, you know, the balloon payment, so to speak. No, Trav, I'm telling you, that's what it is. He was right. <laughs> he was 100% right. I learned very on that when it comes to football stuff, listen to Key. He's going to tell you the right things. He knows what he's talking about. And he was spot on on that one. I think you're right. 
I think that th- this idea that they're 20, they probably are 20 million over the cap somewhere on a spreadsheet, somewhere on, on some sort of rundown of what we owe and what the cap is and all these things. And I think that you're fine. We'll, we'll pay that later. We'll get to it later. Go give me, yeah, bring Bobby Wagner in. AAD, you want a new deal? We got you. Hey, Cooper Cup, you want to go re- renegotiate this thing? Uh, sure. I'll do that. Okay. Let's redo this. Matthew Stafford, we'll redo your deal. Alan Robinson, come on in. Here's a new deal. It's just, it's wild. They, they can continue to spend like this. I'm not a capologist. I don't know how it works, but somebody inside that building must understand it awfully well if they can keep doing the things that they're doing. It's just, it's just extraordinary. And, and, you know, as a fan of the Rams, as somebody that gets to cover the team on a regular basis, I love it. You don't think I want to cover Bobby Wagner 17 times a season and in the playoffs? Of course I do. Allen Robinson? Yeah, let's do. Not my money, right? If, if they're willing to pay the piper down the road, Let's keep it going. Now, if the whole thing comes crashing down, if it's a house of cards, then, you know, year six, seven, 10, 12, whatever it might be, then maybe there's some lean years. But in the moment, let's go. Let's make this happen because the Rams have figured out the cap like very few other teams have. Don't forget, you can write your comments on the YouTube channel as well. I'll try to get to as many of them as I can. appreciate everybody that sent something in. Keep them coming and make sure that you subscribe to Locked on Rams, not only in your podcast feed, but on your YouTube channel as well all right so thanks for making locked on rams your first listen every single day now make your second listen locked on nfl draft ryan tracy and former nfl cornerback eric crocker bring the nfl draft to life every day with insight and analysis on college football prospects and nfl front offices it too is free and available wherever you get your podcast on monday we're going to see exactly where the rams are right now free agency finally starting to settle down a little bit what have they let go what has come in we'll break it all down that's coming up on Monday. Until then, whose house? It's a locked on Rams house.